Hey coders and non-coders, welcome back to the channel. In this video, I'll show you how I created a fully functional app that can accept payments that is live and deployed in three days. And here it comes without knowing how to code. So I am a no-coder. I have never studied or learned coding. Really, I have taken a few online courses here and there, but I have never coded a fully functional app before. So in this video, I'll show you how I exactly did that. And to show you that I know a little bit about what I talk about, I have another application that is live. I built this with a co-founder together. We did about uh, 63K. It's a chatbot on WhatsApp. It's called Ginny. It has about uh, 400 or 500,000 users. And my idea was to build a, another WhatsApp chatbot myself because I'm, I already know this space a little bit myself. So I, I have no idea what goes on in the background, but I know that WhatsApp is actually the biggest social platform in the world, has about like 3 billion uh, monthly active users. And I see a lot of potential for paid chatbots on this platform. And uh, to show you quickly that my bot that I built works actually, let me turn the camera around here. So what I built is like a Bible chatbot because I saw this going viral on social media uh, for apps. And I thought, okay, if chat apps can go viral, a WhatsApp chatbot app can go viral as well. So it's called Holy Words. And uh, as you will see, it will now pop a, a paywall will come up. And uh, yeah, exactly. You're out of blessings. Click here to upgrade and subscribe and receive unlimited blessings. Holy Word, subscribe. So it completely works. And it's, it's just amazing. Like um, I have a basically based completely on ChatGPT, but with a custom prompt. Um, and it gives you only like, as you can see, it gives you only like Bible verses here back end after 10 messages or whatever I want to uh, set it to. I can also set it to zero or to 30 free messages. There will be a paywall and then people pay. And as I saw from Ginny, right, the other chatbot that I have, uh, the one with like 400 users, it can make substantial money. And even in probably niches that I haven't thought about yet, for example, I don't know, dieting, right? You could even integrate uh, sending here pictures, right? And have a diet chatbot on WhatsApp. Super uh, nice use case, probably. Yeah, this is the website of, of the project. I basically just cloned it with, uh, with Webflow. And uh, yeah, for, for front end, I'm usually just using Webflow mostly for the landing pages, I mean. And um, yeah, let's get into the juice. So I've had very good success with building apps on WhatsApp because it's just such a huge reach, like 3 billion people. Um, and there are some companies like Twilio where you can build easy integrations to WhatsApp, but they charge you a ton. They charge you like per message of users and you go bankrupt like that happened to us in the beginning. Um, so if you don't want to code at all and want to build a monetizable WhatsApp chatbot that you can custom prompt, and either use it for B2B or uh, B2C use cases and have a Stripe paywall inside the WhatsApp chatbot so you can charge your users money, I will actually link a boilerplate of my code that is fully functional and working in the description below so you can check it out. And if you say, okay, I just want to skip the, the code part and the figuring out part, uh, you can get that and get started in like 30 minutes. Just change the API keys and uh, you're good to go with an own WhatsApp chatbot. All right. Let's start with the tutorial. So for this app that I built here, I obviously do not need a front end. I just built a landing page and um, the front end is basically all WhatsApp, right? And this is very comfortable because it's a working app. You can just use the API of WhatsApp to build this app. But um, yeah, let's jump into how to use cursor and how to build this. So I made a little list here. Um, first, you want to, of course, come up with an idea, right? And I have two ways to come up with an idea where I think it makes sense to build that. The first one is you just build a niche version of an existing idea. That is always a good idea. If you go to any app that is successful, you will find they have multiple use cases usually. And you just take one of the use cases and build it for yourself. Or you copy an idea into a new market or language. This is a bit what I... I did here with, uh, with the Bible chatbot. I saw there's an app out there, I think it was called Bible Chat or something, and I just copied it to a new market. The market is WhatsApp. If this is, will ever uh, make huge money, or if I will even promote it, I will see it has like 30 active users right now already, which is cool. They came all organically. Um, 
But yeah, this was for me basically just to, to myself, okay, I can code a fully functional app without a technical co-founder. Yeah. Once you have your idea, go either to ChatGPT or to Cursor yourself. Um, let's, let's jump to Cursor. And you, you, yeah, you can you start in Cursor or in ChatGPT. Both is fine. And just give it a rough overview, right? Like just tell it um, what is your plan. You can even use, uh, use the voice over here. Let's use it. Hey, hey there, I, I want to code a note-taking app that is based um, on the web, not, not in the app store, for, uh, for entrepreneurs, okay? And I want to use um, Node.js in, in the back end as a tech stack, and I also want to use uh, Superbase as the database for that. Give me a rough overview about what I should do. And you can either give this ChatGPT, uh, let me copy this. Um, so I have a little bit of overview here in ChatGPT, but um, of course we can also directly start in um, here. Let me close, let me close that project and uh, directly start in Cursor. So once you download Cursor, this looks something like this. You have here on the side, you have a, a AI panel where you can toggle on like a chat window, like ChatGPT a bit. And here you can select models, okay? We have uh, the latest OpenAI models and we have also uh, Claude 3.5 Sonnet. I would either choose Claude or um, O1 Preview for that. And let's give it a spin. If we hit a command and enter, we're gonna chat with the whole code base. Obviously, we do not wanna take the, the whole world's code base right now, but this is gonna be a new project. And um, yeah, let's hit enter. And it's gonna give us a rough overview about what to do, right? And um, from here, I'm saying, okay, great. How should I structure the project? Because you should know that um, the that app or like uh, softwares are always structured in these folders here. So you will never have all your code in one folder. That would just be madness because um, you want to have it in like uh, components or like yeah, little uh, subfolders. You can, can control everything yourself. So what I did then is I created all these folders manually myself and also all these uh, all like uh, yeah functions here myself. I'm not sure if AI can already do that for me. I didn't find a way. Maybe maybe I'm so stupid and didn't find it. So I created all this like structure here myself. Right here you see it for for the Holy Words project. And uh, yeah, once that was done, that that actually the longest part like to to set that up all myself. I then went ahead and said like, okay, uh, great. I have created the structure. What's next and here is an important part a problem that i encountered with is that cursor or claude the the pro used mostly did not know the um the updated docs so every software has always uh, documents uh, documentations right how to use it and uh, the docs that the ai model knew were not updated which meant that it often gave me code that did not work in the end so i had to give them actually the updated docs and there's two ways you can do that. You either go to the web and see, okay, what kind of um, applications or APIs do I need to use? For example, WhatsApp, right? And then you go to the uh, WhatsApp, to the WhatsApp docs, and you either just copy the entire page and paste it in there. It's totally fine. Um, or you paste a link, or you paste a screenshot into into the video here, right? So you can here you can upload an image or you can paste an entire uh, completely page in here as well. So it then knows the updated docs, right? So let's have one step back. So which languages to use? I honestly just asked a friend of mine who is a coder, okay, what languages should I use? Because I know for a WhatsApp chatbot, I can use any language. I could use Python, I could use Node.js, whatever. And he said, okay, just go with Node.js. It's like the most popular language because you then only need to learn one language uh, to do backend and frontend because it's both JavaScript. Now I was like, okay, okay, um, I'm trusting you, bro. Um, let's do it like this, right? Yeah. What I also would do is get a GitHub account, a GitHub, uh, GitHub account for like version control. And so your code is not only stored here on your device, but you can also then 
upload it to the cloud and it's always there. Um, I got an ng-rock uh, server for testing. For those of you who have never called before, that is like a free simple server that you can uh, set up and run whenever your computer is open where you can basically simulate a live version of your app and you can test then uh, webhooks and APIs. Um, if you don't know what webhooks and APIs are, just ask Cursor, just ask ChatGPT. You need it in most applications that you build to communicate with other uh, applications. I also, honestly, I just learned this myself in like a few days, right? So uh, it's, it's not that hard. So whenever, whenever you have a question, ask AI, right? Just literally, just ask it, right? So I literally have really dumb chats with Cursor. I think sometimes this AI thinks I'm super stupid because I'm just a beginner and I ask, okay, what exactly does this webhook now do and whatever? And um, yeah, but honestly, just ask. AI will not judge you. This is beautiful compared to a human tutor, right? I also asked it what database to use and then I looked at a few different databases and I saw like, ah, oh, okay, I, I need one that is um, has high read and write capabilities and is then cheap also if it scales. So I used Superbase and um, for payments, obviously Stripe integration. And um, yeah, then in the end, I used a railway server, which is free in the beginning for deployment because it can easily deploy from GitHub. And then I also asked Cursor on how I how deploy this, all of this, right? Yeah, so this is basically the step-by-step, -step, right, that, that you follow. Um, of course, for your project, this is all individual. But whenever you have a question, just go in here and ask, like, yeah, literally ask it. So now I ask it, for example, okay, great, I have created a structure. What is next? And it already starts here uh, setting up the stuff for me, right? I would now include um, the latest docs first. So I would copy paste them in for this project. And uh, so it doesn't need so many revisions, right? And uh, yeah, um, basically how you get started. So it's, it's so hard can also, if you do not want to use this chat window all the time, but just want to edit a little part in your code where you think it needs editing, you just select that and hit Command K and then you can chat here inside of the code and um, tell it, okay, to only um, change the specific part of the code, right? And last but not least, also here in the terminal, you will see um, the errors and mistakes that will definitely happen when you first make your own app. And you can just also uh, mark these and then add them to the chat here on the right side and tell them, hey, uh, here is an error what should I do? And it will then give you probably a good answer. If it does not give you a good answer, I also found it helpful to copy and paste the complete error that I got into ChatGPT actually, because uh, ChatGPT more often uh, looks then on the web and finds the actual answers in the updated documentations. So that was quite helpful sometimes. And then I just told ChatGPT, okay, just regenerate me this code part. And so I can copy paste it in here. And yeah, that's a quick overview about how I used Cursor to make this uh, chatbot here on WhatsApp that people can pay for and actually subscribe. And I know you know coder guys will have a bunch of questions. So please hit me in the comments so I can make new videos about these topics then and how to code with Cursor.